Hi, time for an episode of the Thought Project, just so you know. And today we're going to be starting out with a little bit of relaxing Halloween jazz music. Well, I drank some tea, which already has the bag out, of course. So. I think that's enough today of jazz music, don't you? I'm certainly not feeling like dancing this morning or afternoon or wherever you're out in the world, whatever time of day it is. It's the afternoon here in the U.S. But um, anyways, I'm going to start out with some basic news coming out, a little analysis that BRICS has announced that they dumped a huge amount of bonds in September 2023, and that was actually announced by the U.S. Treasury. Janet Yellen, as a director, has announced it. Um, basically, it's reported. And basically, they dumped about $17.4 billion worth China alone sold about 13.4 billion and the reserves dropped from 35.4 billion to 20.8 billion. Um, and Brazil offloaded 2.7 billion and Saudi Arabia also sold 1.1 billion. So that's not part of BRICS, that's just another country involved. And then apparently the English have sold a million. And the reasoning behind it for the concern is that supposedly it's to devalue the rising US dollar value, which is stronger than the BRICS currencies. And that's certainly true. Um, China and Russia's currencies having just totally dropped, but um, it's kind of important to note that I'm not sure it's actually a bad thing, and I know this from personal experience because for years, Circe, she was the Russian woman that I had to deal with, I couldn't get to go away and spent all those years working with the U.S. government to get to leave me alone, um, and stole from me, constantly said that the U.S. was indebted to China because China held all their debt, and she used to make this really weird hand motion. Kind of looked like she thought she was holding them by like their genitalia or something. But that's an incorrect assumption to say that simply because a country has bought a lot of U.S. bonds that they hold the U.S. debt because they don't. But you do have to be concerned that they actually thought they did and had control over the U.S. and therefore behaved poorly because of it. I mean, they be, China and Russia behave poorly anyways. As I noted in the last episode, they openly attacked the U.S. fairly often. They attacked our Marines over the summer and some of them were actually killed. And as you've noted, we've had to expand bases in the Pacific. So, you know, to say they're not overly aggressive is kind of an understatement. But the point being that you can no longer say that they hold our debt or that they hold all these bonds. That's not really true. And the offloading, I don't even see as a negative because we can finally put this bizarre false narrative behind us. And the idea that China or Russia would even hold on to our bonds and claim we owe them something is just over. So let's just move on. And it's kind of important to note, too, um, right now there's been some conflict with Israel and Palestine that's been struck up again. And I noted that um, the USS Gerard R. Ford Carrier Strike Group was pretty quick to respond to go to the Mediterranean to become part of whatever was going on in the area to try to do whatever they could to help, I guess to intervene and that there was immediately people posting on my Facebook page and all over Facebook and on social media doing requests complaining the U.S. isn't doing enough for Israel and running what looked like fake fundraisers where people could get taken advantage of and lose their money. So I'm just going to caution you on not giving your money to fake front groups or anyone who's online asking for money for Israel. That's really scary. You only want to go through basically whatever the U.S. government would be advising people to do, and I doubt they would advise you to just go give your money to anyone. That's a bit too much like the weird fundraising letters from Africa and other countries that have conflict uh, where they ask you to just send all your money to them. So, wouldn't bother with that. 
and just be really careful. You know, it's one thing to have sympathy for a group of people under attack, but you have to remember that, you know, the Ukraine is going through it every day and there's all this conflict in Europe. And as far as anyone can tell at this point, it appears to have been a situation stirred up again by Russia and the Middle East because that's what they've been doing for decades is starting up fights in former USSR territories and creating conflicts that the U.S. continually gets dragged into. And I'm concerned that we would send a carrier over there when we're actually facing a border crisis every day and constant attacks. I mean, the CCP has sent an entire bus of 100 people over the border. They successfully made it up into the U.S. into a state beyond the basic border states before being stopped. Like, these are all issues we have to be concerned with. So I'm kind of, I'm a little hurt, actually, that anyone would immediately start attacking the U.S. and saying we hadn't done enough when we've given so much money and put so much time and effort into the situation only to have it fall apart over and over again. And I really think it's time for the U.S. to start looking for some other people to take responsibility for their own behavior in the situation as well. And Russia is definitely a big player there that tries to stir things up and cause fights. So it's important to remember that. And it's also important to note that in China, there was a huge amount of social media supporting Palestine today and praising them for their attack. So that's what's going on there. Does that line the U.S. up immediately in some kind of axis with Israel? No, not really. But it does note that, you know, it denotes the fact that China is clearly supporting Palestine and Russia very clearly sets up these situations and conflicts there. And those two are very closely aligned with each other. And when you talk about China, you're really not even talking about the Chinese. You're talking about the CCP, which is a group of people who are ethnocentrically related to Russians and have Russian ancestry themselves. Just try to remember all this stuff when we go through a show, because I hate it when people line everything up by, you know, blanketly attacking the Chinese as if all Chinese people are bad when they're not. But the CCP is a pretty aggressive, angry, thuggish organization. And they do attack people internationally and cause problems and wars internationally. And Russia, unfortunately, is pretty much the same as far as the government and the Russian mafia and their place in the U.S. So it's important to remember that. Um, as far as the entertainment industry goes, DreamWorks Animators has announced that they will lay off 70 employees. And they are shifting away from producing in-house material and using third-party studios. One of my sources know that for me. So thank you so much for putting that out there. Um, I think it's only inevitable that DreamWorks, being with who they were aligned with, would lose money and eventually even probably go out of business. And frankly, I herald and welcome the end of a lot of these organizations as far as the so-called entertainment industry, because what's been going on with the Russian mafia and Hollywood and the setup of the FSB in the U.S. and filling themselves through it really needs to end. So I'm sorry for people who are there losing their jobs, but I'm really not sorry at all if you're part of those organizations. And that's the reality. And I need to note, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has decided today he's not going to be running for the Democratic nomination for president or even VP of President Biden. He's decided to go independent. Um, I did have a friend who lived in the D.C. area who worked for him years ago, and I told her I always thought he should just go independent. I didn't bother with trying to be the Democratic Party with what's been going on. And maybe he'll stay with the GOP, too, as well, with what's been happening. Um, I need to note for you that, you know, this is kind of a weird situation in my opinion, but um, Dua Lipa was another person that I had been forced to do work for and didn't get paid. And her producer's pretty aggressive, you know, part of the whole Buffalo Bill nasty network with Kendrick, Cersei, Wilhelm, Patricia, and Karen, Swiss Miss. I think we've all discussed how greedy and violent those people are and the fact they're still free in the U.S., so you need to be worried about that. But she's now announcing that she thinks she has a new album. I don't know where from. I stopped, you know, I got out of the situation was being trafficked by her people over a decade ago. Her last album was pretty much part, mostly part, actually partially mostly sung by me and another woman I didn't get paid anything for it and the material was. So I don't know what she thinks she's making now because she doesn't have anything else for me and she's never getting anything else again. And I got nothing for her. And I don't think anyone else really does either. So I can't imagine that she actually has anything at all. I know I managed to quit working out like halfway through. And so the stuff that was finished up was just really bad. Like they did this Let's Get Physical song. I mean, the guy even told me, so he was just going to rip off Olivia Newton-John with Let's Get Physical, which she did. So she has this really trashy techno sound, sound song that's like Let's Get Physical, but it's like a new version. It's just really weird and kind of dumb. Um, so I don't really think she's going to have anything else that's going to be really salient as far as anyone expects. Um, but it is funny to watch him try. It's funny to watch him try and fail. Uh, about like watching Taylor Swift try to go football games and be offended and appreciated anymore. Because she's another one that's part of the FSB. By the way, it has gotten so big. The situation with her has gotten so big with this bizarre drama with her ticking off the NFL. That the Eagles, I need to look this up for you for a second. 
the Eagles, one of their big football players came out and said that he does not want her coming to their game. Should oh, Darius Slay has said that he does not want her at their games. And he doesn't care if the Aeros Tour is on hiatus. He doesn't want her there. And has made some serious, what is basically an open threat. He's just saying, do not come. You know, you come, it's on, it's on you. Anything happens to you here, it comes on you. It's your own fault for showing up. So should Kansas City Chiefs play the Eagles? Doesn't look like it's going to be a safe place for Taylor Swift to hang out. So I guess you might want to put out a little notice that it's not a safe space for Taylor Swift to come to. And it's probably going to be a lot worse than them just running ads on the bull jumbo drones and making fun of her and telling her that they don't like her. Um, and hissing at her. He's pretty clearly saying, don't, don't bother showing up here because we're not going to host you. So that's what's going on with that. Um, I have to sort of pick it back to the weird sort of thing I brought up with the FACO therapist who turned out to be Mrs. Kramer from Iowa. She would posed as a teacher back in elementary schools back in Dubuque. But what I want to note is that she was, you know, the point about her conversations with me where she would just say, no, I don't want to pay you or, you know, threaten to kill me or say I was supposed to work for free to marry Kendrick who, why would anyone do that when the guy is like a rapist and a pervert and a freak and he's giving all my money to these two Russian people that are abusing me and says he only hires Russians, the whole weird thing. Well, the point is that she was psychologically abusive. She was just a really nasty, abusive person. And she'd say whatever she saw up or felt like saying to people in order to try to get things for free and to threaten them. And what's scary is that she got away with it for a really long time. I hope she's in prison today. I hope people actually did their job around the DC area and put her away somewhere. But she was a horrible person and... You have to know that that's kind of how all this stuff gets set up, is that I was stolen as a kid. I wasn't allowed to return. My mom was heavily abused and then murdered. My father was murdered along the way. These situations don't just happen easily. People don't just get stuck in them, especially not someone as intelligent as me. I got out of it in one piece because I am an intelligent person, but, you know, I still have to work it for the rest of my life. And the point about it is that I saw a lot of lies about trafficking. They say, oh, well, they promise you gifts. They promise you vacations. No, traffickers are very controlling. They give you gifts that go with their sponsorships and arrangements. Like I was told to get things at a discounted coach because seriously had a relationship to Jennifer Lopez. Do I buy coach stuff today? No, I don't want to. Why was I told I had to go to Sicily? Well, it turned out Cersei and Wilhelm, we thought, everyone had thought that they got their trip paid for by Big Pharma. Actually, they set me up in a room where people could see me and I couldn't figure out that I was being seen entirely. And, you know, some people had tripped told me what was happening, so I was able to put a stop to it. And that put my life at risk and I ended up getting harmed as a result of it. But they were actually paying for the trip by having me along as a model. I was, I don't know, probably 29 at the time. No, no, no I just turned 30. And I think, you know, I would think well, I was a size 12. So who would even want to see that? But no, for them and their culture in the Sicily, that was great. And their doctor was on trip, you know, had thought it was attractive until they realized that on top of, you know, selling me, me not being paid for it, me being forced to go on the trip, me being sick the whole time to keep me off base of centered, um, they were also setting up a whole bunch of doctors on a trip. And so that's how nasty and aggressive Cersei and Willem were, and they're Russian. They thought they were going to set up a bunch of internationally <laughs> renowned doctors. So that probably was a trip that actually really did them in when they got that sort of ballsy. And if you think Kendrick and his agency in Hollywood wasn't behind that, and the abuse of me and everything that went on was just accidental you're just wrong stop believing the lie that traffickers promise all these great gifts that people are taking in by the reality is they'll say stupid things like you're supposed to be why be married a person says well, i don't want to be they say no you have to be and they'll beat you up and torture you over it for saying what you just want out of life which is basics you know if you say i don't want an expensive purse because i don't want to do this work for free they'll beat you up over it you say i don't want to go on this trip you might get beat up or other people might get killed. Like, that's how bad my situation was. And I'm not even kidding you that when the government started clamping down and just telling people to say no at any cost, you know, we've seen a rise in terrorist attacks, but the reality is that there came a pivotal policy position change to putting the lives of victims ahead of these lunatics and their behaviors because the trafficking of victims such as myself was being used to make money for the FSB, which support, which is Russia. Okay. So you need to understand all of this stuff. And that's probably the reason I make the show because I want people to understand some of the lies out there. They're not, it's not that they're promising such great trips or gifts. That's the lie they put out in the media. It's literally that they're really nasty. They're using signet systems. They're abusing people, torturing them and keeping them, keeping them. 
and there isn't enough help in certain parts of this country if you need to get out or get them away and sometimes the cops just won't even do their jobs and intervene which was certainly the problem in Arlington. My situation changed exponentially when I moved closer to the Alexandria police. Also a friend of mine who was a prosecutor came to town and we went to the DC police about it so they became more helpful. This also begs the question on why we have an issue at all. I mean you look out and Los Angeles and there's thefts and stores and also in DC and it's hard for me to understand why the police allow it when their signet systems being set up to steal and I realize that there may even be some conflicts with some of the owners themselves not particularly caring like they're supposed to about keeping their products because I saw a situation with one manager in the Arlington area where she was deliberately letting products be stolen and then making reports afterwards so she very clearly as a store manager was allowing a store to be stolen from so if you're stealing from a store you probably have a relationship with the management right we kind of know that about you and we know that if there's a manager of the store that's like thefts happen regularly and they're not really doing anything about it then they're basically working with the thieves themselves that's pretty much the answer where the cops play that i don't even know anymore sounds kind of crazy but it's disgusting that somebody would take a job at a store only to sell them out basically which is what that is so anyways i'm gonna finish my show um with singing a song by chris stapleton called tennessee whiskey i don't know if chris stapleton wrote it himself either maybe he didn't maybe somebody else wrote it for him with the way things are going i'd wonder about that one too but what i will say is don't forget that the department of justice decided over 10 years ago the way to handle all these people taylor swift jennifer lopez you know duly bill the rest of them are crazy and weird and want to steal from everyone and working for russia is mock them we know they're russian mafia we know they're kgb now called the fsb and they really will be mocked and apparently, according to the Eagles, told just to go away and not show up. <laughs> That's probably going to happen a lot, too, in restaurants and stores and all our places in the U.S. as well. So that's uh, pretty much what they've earned with their behavior. So I'm going to go ahead and sing this. Used to spend my nights out in a bar room. Liquor was the only love I'd known. But you rescued me from reaching for the bottom. And brought me back from the end to far gone you're as smooth as tennessee whiskey you're as sweet as strawberry wine you're as warm of brandy and honey I stay stone on your love all the time I've looked for love in all the same old places around the bottom of a bottle's always dry but when you poured out your heart I didn't waste it cause there's nothing like your love to get me high and your is it's Tennessee whiskey. You're as sweet as strawberry wine. You're as warm as a glass of brandy. 
And honey, I stay stoned on your love all the Your eyes smooth as Chelsea whiskey. Your are sweet as strawberry wine. Your are as warm as a glass of brandy. And honey, I stay stoned on your love all the time. You're as smooth as Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. You're as smooth as Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. Tennessee whiskey. And that is the show for today. Please subscribe. I'm at Deborah Casey on YouTube, and I definitely need more subscribers. Also, I'm in the competition for a new beauty magazine to do a pictorial for them. It's the Fab Over 40 competition, so please vote for that if you can. I'll be posting links around on YouTube as well. Have a good day.